All right, welcome. In this video, we'll be deriving um, an equation that basically says the relative speed of approach is equal to the relative speed of separation when two objects collide with perfect elasticity. So a perfectly elastic collision is when two objects collide and the kinetic energy is conserved. It could be more than two objects. We're just going to consider two objects. And so in any collision, momentum is conserved. So remember, momentum E is equal to mass times velocity in general. We'll consider two objects that collide with perfect elasticity. And so the initial momentum is going to be the sum of the individual momenta of the particles. So we have the mass of object one times its initial velocity, that's its momentum. And we'll add to it the momentum of object two, which is just going to be its mass times its initial velocity. So M1 U1 plus M2 U2 will be the sum of the individual momenta equals the total momentum. All right. The final momentum will then just be object one traveling at final speed V1, and then object two, which is a different object than object one, right? So we don't have this inelastic collision like we saw with our ballistic pendulum, where, where we're sort of having some new object that has a shared mass. It's like the, the objects are still separate, and they're going to have perhaps different velocities. Okay, but this equation will be true for any collision. Momentum is always conserved in any collision. Kinetic energy is only conserved in perfectly elastic collisions. Again, by definition, we, we define a perfectly elastic collision as one where the kinetic energy is conserved. Okay, so this is true. So let's remind ourselves that kinetic energy in general is one half mv squared. You can maybe see why well, I said this is going to be some alphabet soup here. We're going to have to sort of take this. And so in general, that's true. Just like in general, this is true. But look, you got two objects. So we're going to do the same thing over here. Okay, what's the kinetic energies of these objects? Everybody ready? Should we do this in a different color? How is that color? That's okay. Let's get, uh, let's get our, sour, our sour line green here. I guess that was a sour one. Thanks. All right, so we got one half. I'm showing up okay. The mass of object one times its initial velocity squared plus one half mass two initial velocity two squared equals the final one half m one v one squared plus one half m two v two squared. All right, so you got objects one and two colliding, bouncing off, and this is true, the kinetic energy is conserved, and this is true, the momentum is conserved. Think about yesterday's essential question, how are these laws important in sort of deducing the muscle velocity? We use both energy conservation and momentum conservation, although the energy conservation looked a bit different because we were equating the potential energy of the pendulum sort of at the top of its path to the, the kinetic energy that it possessed just upon impact of the dart. All right, so mathematically speaking now, let's combine some like terms here. So we want to get our M1s together on one side of the equation, our M2s together on the other side. So I'll subtract this term from both sides. So I'll have over here M1U1 minus M1V1, right? So just subtract this from both sides, so it's negative over here. Likewise, I'll subtract this from both sides. So I'll get my M2s on the, on the right side. So over here, I'm going to subtract M2U2 from both sides. So it cancels out over here. It's like M1, V1 minus M1, V1 is zero. And it's negative M1, V1 over here, right, when I subtract it. So this thing is going to be negative on this side. So I have M2, V2, which is still positive on this side of the equation, right? And I'm subtracting this from it. So minus M2, U2. So far, so good, everybody? Factor out common term. Okay, so M1 is common. Here. So we're going to factor that out. We got M1 times the quantity U1 minus V1. Try to make your U's and your V's very distinct here. Factor out M2 on this side, V2 minus U. U2 over there. Right there. U2 over there. And I think that's about as far as we can take that. I don't think there's anything else we can really do with that equation at this point. I guess. That's it. 
Let's go over here now. So kind of do the same thing over here, all right? Let's get our M1s together, our M2s together. So I have uh, one half M1 U1 squared minus this term, right? Same thing, get my M1s together. So minus one half M1 V1 squared equals this term positive on this side, one half M2 V2 squared minus this guy. Subtract this from both sides and we'll get M2 U2 squared. Now, one thing, you know, you could do is just multiply everything by two, right? Why would we want to do that? Just multiply every term by, are we allowed to do that in algebra? Just multiply everything by two because we want to? Yes, as long as you do it to everything, okay? It's basically just like inflating the equation saying, well, if this is equal, then two times everything should still be equal, right? So if I double this, gets rid of that, for that, for that, it's just doubling everything gets rid of the fraction. It's kind of nice. It's like it's the same thing as like dividing by one half everywhere. Are you allowed to divide both sides by the same thing? Allowed to multiply both sides by the same thing? So I basically like taken this term and times it by two, which just effectively cancels out the fractions. All right. So I've got it's a little bit friendlier, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna also take a a step here and I'm going to factor out this M1 just like we did over here. So I've, I've got rid of the fractions. We're allowed to do that. I'm going to factor out the M1s on this side. So I'm going to have M1 times the quantity U1 squared minus V1 squared. And on this side, we've got the same thing. We cancel out the fractions. We'll factor out M2, V2 squared minus U2 squared. Okay. Now here we can do something with this, okay? We have here the difference of two squares, right? The difference of two squares. So what is that? M1 times, is this U1 um, minus V1, U1 plus V1, right? Like we're unfoiling this so to speak. You guys know how like we foil binomials to get something like this? First, outside, inside, last. If you were to foil this, wouldn't it become that? U1 times U1 is U1 squared. U1 V1 minus U1 V1. The middle term cancels. Negative V1 times V1 is negative V1 squared. See how this foils into that. So we factored this, okay? The difference of two squares factors this way. Over here, we can do the same thing. We've got M2 on the outside, and we've got V2 minus U2, V2 plus U2. And again, we can just kind of check V2 times V2 is this. V2, U2 minus V2, U2, the middle term goes away. Negative U2, U2, negative U2 squared. Good. Now we're going to divide this equation by this equation. You're allowed to do that. Divide that by this, all right? M1, U1 minus V1, U1 plus V1. Now you know what we want to do. We want to divide this equation by that equation rather, right? We want to have something left over. <laughs> All right, so let's actually divide this one into here. So this one's going to be M1 times U1 minus V1. Plus, I've already written this all out right here, right? I'm just going to write the U2. M2, V2 minus V2. So you can see why we want to do that. The masses cancels, and this term cancels, and this term cancels. So we just get this. U1 plus V1 equals V2 plus U2. And as a final step, we could just sort of you know, put the initials and the finals back together again. So it would be U1 minus U2, subtract this from both sides, equals V2 minus V1. And then this is a mathematical way to say the relative speed of approach equals the relative speed of separation. 
So it's just kind of like relative to each other. However fast the objects are moving relative to each other will be preserved after the collision. They'll, they'll maintain the same relative speed relative to each other. And this is what this is saying. So I write that out in words. Relative speed of approach. All we care about is how they relate to each other. So we don't really need velocity like the direction. The direction is just going to be like, are they going towards or away? Okay. And I'll show you how to calculate relative speed. The relative speed of approach equals, so that's like this, they're approaching each other with initial velocities, equals the relative speed of separation, how, how fast they move away from each other. Now, relative speed is calculated like this. When objects are moving in the same direction, you subtract their speeds to get the relative speed. Same subtract. Think about it like this. If you're going 75 miles an hour down the interstate and somebody passes you going 80 miles per hour down the interstate, how fast does it look like they're traveling relative to you? So you and, and the sort of the lane next to you are going in the same direction. You're going 75, they're going 80, okay? You look at that car and go, well, 80 miles an hour. Like it looks like they're going 80, or it looks like they're just barely passing you, right? Like they're going just a little bit faster than you are. Like so for every you know hour, you're going 70 miles, they're going 75. So after the end of an hour, they're going to be five miles ahead of you because they're going what? Relative to you, they're going how fast. Anybody? Five miles per hour, right? Like if you're going 75 and they're going 80, you're going the same direction. So same direction, subtract speeds to find the relative speed. What do you think you got to do if you're going opposite direction then? So if you're going 75 this way and a car passes you going 75 that way on the other sort of lane of the highway, how fast do you see each other? Okay, because you're speeding up towards this one as it's speeding up towards you. Two cars each going 75 miles per hour see each other at 150. Okay, so the relative speed of, of approach for objects that are going in opposite directions, we add their speeds, okay? So this idea is more useful, more convenient than this, but this always works. Like if you're, if you're analyzing a situation that has perfect elasticity, you could go through all of this and say, well, I know this is true. Let me just sum all the kinetic energies until I solve for whichever one I need. But what's oftentimes gonna be a lot more useful to you is to just say, I know the relative speed of approach equals the relative speed of separation. If I can show that that's true, then I've proven that it's perfectly elastic. Sometimes the question is gonna be, you know, is the collision elastic? Is it perfectly elastic? And you're gonna have to either do an energy budget or you're just gonna have to compare the relative speeds. And if you show that they're the same, because you know, oh, if they're going in opposite directions, I add, same direction, I subtract, then you'll be able to, to, to realize that this is the much more convenient way to go about that. So make a quick note, like you've got this note, relative speed of approach equals relative speed of separation. Let's make a quick note about how we calculate that. So relative speed, I'm gonna write it all the way, like you could just say same subtract, opposite add, but then in a month from now, as you're reviewing for like the midterm, will you remember what that even means? It's just opposite add, same subtract. But if you write out this, the complete sentence, when objects are moving in the same direction, subtract their speeds to calculate relative speed. Then it's going to be a lot more studyable, right? So that's the sentence you want to write off. When objects travel in the, not underline, I may put it, same direction, subtract. And it's the speed. So we don't really care about the direction now. It's just like as soon as we can judge, they're either going the same or opposite. When objects travel in the same direction, subtract speeds to calculate relative speed. And then hopefully 
you can just have a, a parallel sentence to go along with that for opposite now. Okay. When objects travel in the same direction, subtract speeds to calculate relative speeds. Comma. When objects travel in the opposite direction, add speeds to calculate relative speed. And if, if you're ever confused on that, go back to the to the familiar example of a car passing you in the same direction. It's just like, oh yeah, they're, they're barely passing you. I'm going 75, they're going 80. The difference between 75 and 80 is five. And it really does look like they're only sort of crawling past you at about five miles per hour, right? Because you're, you're sort of keeping up with most of their velocity. The opposite direction, right? You you really get close. That's why it's so dangerous to pass a car on like a two lane road where you you, you have the, the ability to pass as long as the way is clear, right? Like there's stretches of A one A where it's just two lanes in opposite directions, but you know you can pass a car as long as you can judge like oh there's no cars coming in the other lane. But if there is a car, you got to remember like they're barreling towards you at the same time you're going towards them, so you got to make sure that it's safe to sort of you have plenty of room to sort of pass a car that's in front of you that might be going, they might just be enjoying the, the view on A1A, right? Like it's a nice ride, but you might be trying to get somewhere. And so the limit is just that a speed limit, right? Cars are allowed to go slower than that. So it's like, there's nothing illegal about them going a bit slower, but you might say, well, I want to pass this car as soon as I can, but it's only, only when the, the highway is this, right? The dash line, and only when it's safe to do so on the other side, okay? A little bonus, um, lesson there as, as we're studying for our you know, driving exams stuff like that. All right, let's see what that uh, practice question is going to look like. So here now, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and introduce this. All right, so this two balls, X and Y, are moving towards each other with speeds of 5 meters per second and 15 meters per, meters per second, respectively. I'm going to give you a little picture of that. To make a perfectly elastic head-on collision, Oh, they make a perfectly elastic head-on collision, and ball Y moves to the right with a speed of seven meters per second. What is the speed and direction of ball X after the collision? So do you see how, okay, yeah, it's this type of question. When you get a question like this, you're going to immediately be able to know, oh, this was perfect, perfectly elastic collision. This is the idea that I kind of need here. They're telling us already that it is perfectly elastic. Okay, so, so that gives us permission to say, oh, when the relative speed of approach equals the relative speed of separation. You know, we don't have to consider this sort of kinetic energy argument anymore. We go right down to the idea of relative speed. What do you guys think? Are they moving towards each other? Same direction or opposite direction? Towards means not same, but what you wrote down, I didn't have enough room. Opposite, right? Towards each other, that's opposite directions. How do we how do we calculate the relative speed here now if it's opposite directions? Moreover, what is the relative speed? So this is before the collision. We're getting the relative speed of approach. And we got to know are they going same or opposite? Towards means opposite, right? Opposite directions. This way is opposite from that way. So what is the relative speed of approach? Let me check the chat here. I saw that there was a couple of comments there that might be for an old question, I'm sure, but yes. Okay. What's the relative speed of approach? Would it be 20 meters per second? 20, Adam, 20, okay. Each one of those objects sees the other one at 20 meters per second. But if this thing's going 50 meters per second, this thing's moving towards it at five, it sees this thing coming towards it at 20 meters per second. So too does this one. It's, so it's like relative speed, it might be helpful to, to sort of how the objects see each other. It's like how fast do they see each other? Okay, like if you were on that sphere, why? How would you see sort of the other one? Okay, it's, it's speeding up towards you. So 20. Okay, 20 meters per second is the relative 
speed of approach. We know it's perfectly elastic. And so only one of these answers is going to add up correctly to give us 20 meters per second relative speed of separation. Okay? They tell us that after the collision, ball Y moves to the right at 7. Okay? So if it's to the right, then it would be same and we'd have to subtract. Okay, same subtract. If ball X collides and bounces that way, like it says this one goes to the right. So if this one collides and changes direction, goes to the left, then they would also be going in opposite directions, right? And we'd have to add again. So if, if one of these are the answer, then we're going to have to add these speeds to this to see if it's 20. If one of these are the answer, then it would be going in the same direction. I realize how, how frustrating that must be for an e-learning student right now. So I'm like pointing to the screen over here and you can't see it. <laughs> so, hold on a second. Let me, let me do it. Let me do it like this. <clears throat> so the relative speed of approach here, right, is, is 20 because we add them opposite directions. And so what we're saying is that if one of A or B is the answer, you know, how does uh, ball X move? Well, if it's moving to the left, that's the opposite as to the right. Thank you. That's the opposite as to the right. So uh, we have to add them. So if you're considering choices A and B, you'd say, okay, that's when I add. You know, I'm trying to calculate the relative speed of separation as equal to the relative speed of approach, which I already know is 20. But if object X also moves to the right, then that would be the same direction as object Y, all Y, and then we'd have to subtract, okay? So it looks like B is the answer, right? Because if you add 13 to seven, then you get 20. And so that's, you know, it's gotta be choice B. You can disprove the other ones. Like if we added three to seven, we'd get 10. And then we'd say, well, that's possible for a collision, but not a perfectly elastic one. We're not conserving kinetic energy if, if the other one's only going three. That's going 13. If this thing is going 15 meters, sorry. If this thing is going 15 meters per second this way and it bounces off and it only goes seven, it's like, where did that velocity go? Oh, it's because this thing got turned around and now it's going 13. Okay. These other ones, we'd say seven minus three is four, 13 minus seven. All that matters is the speed. So you don't need to worry about like a negative sign. You just say, 13 minus seven is six, seven minus three is four. So the subtraction that would be required for the same direction in items C and D lead to an incorrect value. So we can eliminate those as incorrect. B is the only one that satisfies this. I wouldn't even, now you don't know the mass, you can see the mass is gonna kind of cancel, but if they don't give you the mass, it's difficult to sort of start a calculation with kinetic energy. Unless, you, unless they tell you something like they are the same mass and you kind of know, well, whatever the mass is, M is, is going to cancel. So it's almost like certain problems require you to think about it this way. And it, it honestly is the more simpler, uh, more simpler, more simple, more simple way to think about it. It's the simpler way to think about it as soon as you have these ideas under your belt, okay, where you kind of know how to calculate relative speed, say, okay, opposite, add, same, subtract. That's not too bad. It turns this kind of calculation into just like a, oh, 15 plus 5 is the same as 13 plus 7, right? Pretty, pretty straightforward, you know, mathematically there. Really. Okay. We're going to keep going with momentum when we come back from spring break. Tomorrow's a work day. The rest of the class right now for the next 45 minutes or so is a work day. Did anybody change their mind about wanting to fire darts? It's a few steps away to get the apparatus. I've already had all the fun of it yesterday. Now it's your turn. Let me know. Okay. Otherwise, please, uh, oh, I need stuff. 